Meanwhile, Nigerian singer Charles Chikwemeka Oputa, popularly known as Charlie Boy, has lambasted the Kaduna State Governor Nasi Urufai over his recent tweet, supposedly mocking the supporters of Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi. The Kaduna State Governor had in a tweet made fun of the proposed 2 million March rally in Kaduna by his supporters. Erufai's tweet has generated backlashes from TWIPS and other social media users who have lambasted the governor over his prediction and statements. We're now being joined via Zoom by two public affairs analysts, Barrister Justice Uhuebu, I hope I got the, the pronunciation of that name, Barrister Justice Uhuebu and Adeyemi Saka. We are to discuss the banter between political parties, political candidates for various political positions. I welcome you gentlemen into the studio tonight. Good evening. Okay, good. So let me start with um, Barrister Justice Uwebu, if you can hear me clearly. Um, there's been banter of words between political candidates already generating heat in the nation. And we already know that the insecurity in the nation is also, you know, generating a lot of heat in the nation. There's so much campaign of calumny. Uh, what one would think that at this time and the period that the nation is going through, that um, political uh, candidates would be cautious with the use of their words. Well, um, you said it or you laid the background for it. Well, this is a campaign season, and I want to, I want to tell everybody that every issue, every matter counts. We can't do continental some and say they are not important, and we say others are important. One, one, but one important thing, one rule of engagement that must be applied to by all you know, political actors, whether they are supporters, political parties, or the candidates themselves, is to try as much as possible to guard against making inflammatory or insightful statements that could, you know, um, suit the nation over. Because as we speak, like you rightly, uh, you know, acknowledge and said. We are the precipice, and any little push or shove will probably tilt you know, from it down to the other side. I haven't said that, but every issue is a campaign issue. You look at internal rankings in a political party, it's a campaign issue, it's a topic for the, for the, or the opponents, or other parties to come up with, accuse them of if they can't put their party or their house in order, are you sure they're going to put the country in order? So every issue matters, and you cannot, we, we can have a, 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 a handbook. To tell Nigerians or to tell politicians or to tell political actors or uh, candidates that these are no go areas, these are the do's and don'ts. We, we all have um, topics that, um, that we consider passionate to us. To some people, it's the composition of tickets. To some people, it's um, the educational background. To some people, it's the status of health of um, candidates. To some people, it's my own be balancing of um, a presidency. So some of it, and you know, those are the foundational things we discuss before we now go to the second stage. My own opinion, insecurity, economy, health, infrastructure, um, the solvency or the, the looming bankruptcy of the country, you know, those are things, you know, those are issues as well that take from burden. We, we cannot, as a nation, we cannot as an electorate or probably media media practitioners or analysts or even even social public civil society decide for Nigerians what they should consider topics or you know, topical issues to discuss. Okay, let me go back to um, Barrister Justice. Barrister, can you hear me now? Barrister Justice, can you hear me now? Okay, we continue with you. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, Barrister. So we're talking yeah, about the campaign it. of calumny going on between political uh, can politicians, their supporters, and, uh, you know, already generating a lot of heat. And one would think, like I said to Mr. Sakai, one would think that at this 
point where the nation is uh, as it concerns in security matters that politicians will be much more cautious with their words instead of heating up the policy. What's your take on this? Well, uh, um, I think it's a normal thing. Um, this is politics. And uh, one way or the other, the campaign somehow uh, has started in as much as the campaign will start officially, I think, from next month. But somehow it has started because uh, Candace has already started uh, visitations from state to state for one name or the other given to it. So, you know, when you want to uh, uh, rest on power, power is not given, power is taken. And that is exactly what you're seeing. So I'm not surprised. It's a normal thing all over the world. It's not uh, peculiar to Nigeria or whatever. But like, as you rightly said, um, we are facing a very huge problem of insecurity at this point in time. So one should be very, very careful the way you conduct yourself, the way you go about your supporters and all the rest. But I'll tell you for the truth that, that um, uh, this issue of insecurity is going to be a major front line in all the campaigning exercise that we're going to see. It's all like what happened in 2015 uh, when this administration came into, into, in, into being. Uh, one of the major things they talked about is um, uh, uh, you know, crapping down on insecurity, which at the end of the day, we never saw it happen. Rather, with the state we are today, it has multiplied more than 100 times. So that is exactly what we're going to see. Because, in fact, that is the only thing Nigerians are talking about now, insecurity. Unfortunately, nobody is talking about every other aspect of problem facing Nigeria. Uh, now, as we go... Everybody yeah. has to be very, very careful. As we go into the elections, of course, the electorate will be expecting that what politicians should be talking about now should be their agenda for the nation. Nigerians want to see that there is another government in place that would be able to deliver the dividends of democracy. But what we get to hear is the campaign of calumny. Um, the social media is already heated up by supporters of all of these candidates. So what then should voters be looking forward to? I think we are all Nigerians. And with what is happening in Nigeria so far, one doesn't need to ask what will the voters be looking for? Because ordinarily, me as a Nigerian, you over there and whatever, we all know the problem we are facing today in Nigeria today. You don't even want me to mention them, just very few. We are facing a problem of high level of insecurity today. We are facing a problem of economic total. In fact, the, the economy is dead. We are facing another problem, huge problem of hunger. In the society, in Nigeria it has never been this bad before. We're facing a problem of unemployment. We're facing a problem of, you know, total collapse of our the educational system. We're facing a problem of, I mean, the the, I mean, in fact, I don't think, I don't think of a truth that there is any sector that is working in Nigeria as it is today. So Nigeria is expecting a lot. Nigerians are expecting a lot. Mr. Saka, so can you comment on that? Today, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uwebu. Mr. Saka, can you comment on that? Voters uh, are looking forward to, yeah. you know, better days in, in the nation uh, with all of these banters coming in, you know. What then is a voter taking out to say this would be the particular candidates I want to go and stay for hours to vote for? Well, um, you, you see... I, we need to be very careful how to how to want to sound um, you know better informed or um, probably with a better grip of our emotions when it comes to national issues and what have you. We like I said earlier, every issue is a front burner issue. I will tell you, we can talk about insecurity, that is one. We can talk about economic collapse, that is true. We can talk about monumental, what I think I can create a word, pythonic corruption in this administration that I don't think any government since 1960 can draw from the record of this administration when it comes to corruption. That is it. But we look at some other things. We're talking about insecurity. We're talking about 
um, division and non or mis deep mistrust along religious and ethnic lines. And here we have, we want to talk about we like it and we keep, we have to keep, keep talking about the Muslim Muslim ticket. Whether we like it or we have to talk about the status of health of the candidates or aspirants now, uh, no candidates, whether we like it or not, we have to talk about the, the, the integrity of um, the candidates when it comes about the figures they're banding around, uh, data they're putting out there, we need to question it. We need to question their foundation, we need to question their integrity. So everything matters and what we do with it, we cannot start questioning and targeting them on what I call the secondary um, issues confronting us as a nation, insecurity. Is the one of these because I ask myself, I, I I go through the papers on a daily basis, and I see the tons of bad news and reportage I I I, I feast on daily, mm. and I'm asking myself, what is the motivation for these people going into this office? I for a, I for a person would de would definitely abandon ship and run out of this country because then I would like it to me. The presidency, as we speak right now, I'm not talking about the presidency as the administration. But the presidency as an office is in a mess. You, Nigeria is facing bankruptcy. I can't, I can't imagine anybody coming in and telling us he has the magic wand hmm. to turn around the photos of this country in, 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 four, six, in four, four, six months or a year. Saudi Arabia as a nation has declared $88 billion profit, mid-year profit, because of the ongoing Russia Ukraine war. We are here crying about bankruptcy. We are here talking about six point something trillion naira for payment of subsidy, a subsidy that is uh, that is utterly corrupt. So let's hear so from let's let's hear. For me. Thank you so much. So your final words, um, uh, barrister. Your final well, words I, on this, because you are also as, a politician. As it is. <laughs> so you know you know well, the, yes. the rule of the game, right? Yeah, yes, but uh, unfortunately, I have not seen a level playing ground so far. Because some of us, we are cut short or cut out of the whole thing. As far as I'm concerned, if you remember, in March this year, I think first March this year, the National Assembly did uh, pass uh, uh, the bill for independent candidates. But to up to today, you never saw the light of the day. That is to tell you the level of corruption in this country. That is to tell you the political uh, the political warlords, what they are doing. Because the political parties, as far as I'm concerned, there's no internal democracy in the political party. So are you expecting democracy, real democracy in Nigeria? What you practice in Nigeria is quasi-democracy, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Until we start implementing that, and that was why most of us, we are caught short. Because today we're talking about monetizing the whole system. All of them are the same because they were they are all sharing money here and there. How many young Nigerians today can boast of one million to five million naira? You know the huge amount of money they use to buy farms. And Nigerians are clapping. We are clapping for them. And they are coming to campaign to us. I mean, let's be realistic and tell ourselves the truth. We are not yet ready for the positive change we deserve. And people are following them around. Mm. All this money they spent. And all this money they are spending, how are they going to get it? Is it not from the coffers of this country that they are going to get it? Until we make politics in Nigeria to be less attractive and remove money policies from it, we are joking. Thank and we're not you. Telling ourselves the thank you, Barista Uhuegbu. Mm -hmm. And thank you also, Mr. Saka Adeyemi. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of News Now tonight. You're welcome. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.